Welcome to Camp Fry Chronicles, episode number... <laughs> Camp <Can't> Fry. <laughs> Welcome to Camp, Camp Fryers. Fryers. <laughs> Do you remember that Who's line? It's like uh, fish fryers or something. Only fryers sell flowers. Yeah, or... yeah. <laughs> I forget no, that joke. <laughs> okay. okay, welcome to Camp Fire Chronicles, episode number... 16. I'm Robbie. I'm Andrew. I'm Brian. Okay, today we're yep. going to talk about our gear. This is kind of a companion to yep. our gear video. Okay, who wants to start? Brian, you want to start? <laughs> I'll start. All right, we're going to go with the obvious beginning okay. item, the backpack. Um, I actually had a Kelty backpack very recently, up until very recently, uh, but I got a Gregory Mountain Baltoro 85, so 85 liter, and um, I think I've taken it on one trip, right? Yeah. I yeah, think just yeah, this yeah. one, just the that last one, yeah. yeah. Um, and I really like it. Um, the guy, when I was trying to buy a new backpack, the guy was like trying to convince me to go like for a 70 liter so, so the but one I had before the Kelty was 80 liter and the guy was like, oh, you know, we have a 70 liter size. I was like, uh, I, I don't really want to because I just want to make sure that I have the space that I need mm -hmm, when yeah. I do pack things. Because I remember when we were in Japan, I was just kind of like, things were kind of like reaching the, the top of the that. Limit, yeah. yeah. Why did you get a new backpack in the first place? So in, I'm curious if it's <laughs> the reason that I think it is. <laughs> Well, I mean, I've had that backpack for a while, but also um, there were holes in it because, um, well, the, the a lot of the stuff used like netting, like uh, yeah, braided yeah, yeah, yeah. netting, mm -hmm. and those were all ripping. And I actually was like using floss to like tie the back <laughs> together. And I was like, this is ridiculous. It's like the mesh pockets on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then also when we went to Dolly Sods in winter, yeah, yeah. there was a little field mouse running around, and I had a you bag can actually of see bread. it in the episode. <laughs> yeah, I had a bag of bread in my. Um, backpack which i totally forgot about and the next morning i woke up i saw this hole in in this back in my backpack i was like man what the heck ripped my backpack so <laughs> later in the day when we started eating i pulled out that bag of bread and i noticed that it had been chewed through. <laughs> like the bread had been eaten and i was like ah <laughs> see that's what i was wondering i yeah, was wondering yeah. if that was the reason <clears throat> but i didn't think it was big enough of a reason to yeah. get one so i waited for a long time until i was like was okay actually, these yeah. These, something's going to fall through these netting holes <laughs> and it's going to be annoying. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so mine is the REI XT85. It's 85 liters. And for the longest time, I used something called, I think, the Bridger 3000, which I never had fitted or anything. So in all the older episodes, you can see it like <laughs> sagging and stuff. And my shoulders would always hurt. But I actually really liked how the pockets were arranged on that one because um, like the sides, there were the normal pockets at the bottom, but there were also like zipper pockets that you could put stuff in and I just liked how versatile it was. And you could remove the lid or the head crab, as we call it. Yeah. This one is good. I mean, it it, it suits me perfectly fine. Um, but you can't remove the head crab, which is probably my only gripe about it. Because I like the idea of being able to remove it and then have, like, all the stuff you need. Quick yeah, access yeah. To. You probably but. could, if you wanted to, spend the effort. You could probably <clears throat> just cut it off and then attach yeah, clips true. to it. Mm. Um, but, you know, even with your new backpack, you still don't adjust your straps properly yeah but i i don't know it always seems fine to me like especially compared because to my it probably one. fits you but yeah. like your weight distribution is terrible like you could even be even more comfortable yeah i guess mm. so. yeah comfort is for the weak <laughs> <laughs> how did you know that I'm it was lazy. from that movie because i saw the movie and i was oh, like oh that's my back yeah. <laughs> and it's funny the the other guy um his companion had the outer frame version of my old backpack oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah it's called walk in the yeah. woods um yeah yeah but it's funny because they you'd think they would keep selling the backpack but it's out of stock now yeah, yeah. that's really weird like, that's why would like they a have prime opportunity well, like half the movie was probably like an advertisement for rei anyways so they didn't yeah really but still like oh. <laughs> it was a pretty recent movie but Wait, um, did they actually go to rei in the movie they went to rei <laughs> no there's like there's a part <laughs> yeah. where uh, yeah yeah there's yeah, a part yeah. where they they literally go to rei and it's ron swanson like Oh yeah, the, yeah, the same actor Ron Swanson, Nick, Nick Offerman. Yeah, yeah, Nick Offerman was like talking about like in very descriptive detail <laughs> all the things he needed for camping. The, and then there was um, there's a part where her boots are broken, and one you're of the thinking of a different movie. You're thinking. Of oh, wild. that's wild. Yeah. Oh, I'm oh, thinking that was wild. more subtle. Yeah, yeah. No, that was still pretty on the nose. But though. like they were just carrying like 100 percent REI gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, in in a movie called Wild, um, which is actually a good movie too. Um, Oh, that's the one where she's like struggling. Yeah, Reese Witherspoon. Like, find, yeah, Reese yeah, Witherspoon. Yeah. Yeah. Her her um, boots are broken, and she goes to this they're, site. They're, no, they're, they're they're not the right size. I'm oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah. Did you get these at REI? 
He's like, yeah. He's like, oh, well, you know, just call them and they'll send you a new one. <laughs> and she's like, oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the Truman Show. Like, um, I've had other Cocos. This is the best. <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> There's nobody here. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, so 85 liters is probably way more than I need, but considering that we carry camera gear and also sometimes I bring like excessive stuff just to film fun, f- yeah, like yeah. cooking mm-hmm. meals and stuff, uh, it's good to have that amount of room. But mm. yeah, and then yeah, so mine is the Kelty Red Cloud 90 liter, <clears> and <throat> so I had that old blue one. You guys remember that one? Yeah, that one was terrible. Like it was just all on the shoulders. No matter what I did, I couldn't get the hip straps to work. Yeah. So then I went onto Amazon and I was just looking for the same one you had because I've yeah. worn yours, your old red one, the Kelty one, and it was great. So I got this one. I didn't even like think about the size or the weight. I was just like, oh, that's probably good. That looks mm-hmm. like the same thing Brian has. So I got it, but I don't really like it because it's too big and too heavy. It's mm-hmm. like six pounds, 90 liters. I don't need 90 liters, like, especially yeah, once I finally a get a smaller sleeping bag. Yeah. I won't need that full 90 liters. <laughs> I wonder what the difference of your weight versus ours is. Like, Ooh. is it a significant difference in weight? Because I, mine's 85 right now. Yours is 85 also, right? Oh, just the backpack. Liters? Backpack. Yeah, just the backpack. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wonder if your specific backpack is like maybe like a pound heavier than ours. I, it's got to be. I mean, it's it seems so like the material, big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The material is pretty heavy duty. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you get a new sleeping bag, are you going to use the old one ever for winter maybe? No, my plan is to get a new sleeping bag that's down mm. and just really oh, spend yeah, the yeah. money on it and get one that's as warm. Efficient. Good idea. Yeah. Efficient. I still remember you yeah. the old backpack you used to attach your sleeping bag with like belts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those belts by themselves probably weighed a pound. Like that was really <laughs> you just go back and watch our old videos and see yeah. how like <clears throat> noobish we were. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You use what you have yeah. and then you you iterate and we've always we've always preached that it's yeah. every time you go camping it's a learning experience you yeah. learn what you need what you don't need and yeah what you need to spend your you know good money on to for it to last yeah we can go to sleeping bags next because that i got a point to make with that mm-hmm. the whole reason i have my current sleeping bag is because we went to hocking hills one time mohican. i didn't bring yeah, yeah. it was mohican right oh was it hocking no hocking i hills? i had that so oh wow bag. god we that's so long hills, ago that's amazing and we all got rained on <laughs> and i didn't even bring a sleeping bag or blankets or anything for some reason we had so many people well the weather was so nice that day yeah and it got super cold that night was that yeah. 2008 or nine it was, that was spring one 2008 of those years. i think but in any case i brought uh i didn't bring anything because i just assumed somebody else had brought it and we just like shivered and froze to death in the car because mm. it was wet in the <laughs> sleeping bag and uh say so like at, knee jerked and like bought like the warmest sleeping bag you could find or no something. i mean it was help i don't really find it a knee jerk now because uh. it like worked but yeah, yeah basically i was like <laughs> i'm getting the warmest doesn't matter so i got a five degree fahrenheit do you bag. remember the sleeping bag that sinjian lent us yeah. It was like the size of this microphone yeah. when you packed it down. And it was it was almost like it pointless. Work, like yeah. <laughs> he he bought it and he's I don't think he knew too much about it, but he was like, Oh yeah, this is rated for like forty five degrees. Mm. And then after he used it, he was like, It's rated for forty five degrees if like you're in an emergency situation. Yeah, those ratings yeah, Mike, are rated, not they like they always yeah. say I've read that the the ratings are not comfort ratings yeah yeah yeah. like 45 degrees like you'll be fine in 45 degrees you will not be comfortable yeah yeah so yeah, that's why when we were in japan mm. even though my backpack was rated or my sleeping bag was 15 degrees i was not comfortable like interesting i, I mean i made it through the night fairly well but yeah. i did not have a good night's sleep <laughs> see we used to have these 40 degree ones they're pretty compact um but man, they were terrible, and they always ripped. Yeah, it's like field and stream. I would not recommend. But. Yeah, but in any case, that sleeping bag I've had for eight years. Yeah, that's like, are we that... talking about sleeping bags, or did we just kind of transition to it? No, we transition sleeping oh, bags. Okay. <laughs> what do you have? What oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you were talking about putting your sleeping bag in the backpack, and then yeah, kind of moved on to um, it. Crap! What is it? It's the Mountain Hardware Switch 5. Okay. Mm. They don't make it anymore, but it's rated for 5 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we were in Japan, were you comfortable? I wasn't comfortable, but I was probably way more comfortable than you. Okay, I'm <laughs> curious. Yeah, because five. I don't think it got down to 5 degrees when we were there. I think it was close. Really? Yeah. Okay. It was like, it was well below freezing. Yeah, it yeah. was, yeah. It was pretty cold. It was Didn't probably like say... 12, I feel like, mm, okay. 12 degrees. I, I, 12 that, I degrees. That number in my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah, so what do you guys? Anything else to say about your No, no, no. Okay. That was it. I'm getting a down one. 
Well, my sleeping money. bag was my current one is the Eureka Casper 15 degree sleeping bag. I've never actually heard of this brand, but it was kind of like you. Um, after Mohican, not uh, Hawking Hills, but after Mohican, we had used Thomas sleeping bag, oh, which was rated right. for like. I was gonna degrees. say, isn't that Thomas's brand too? The one he uses mm, Eureka? right now. The I one that so. you guys used at Mohican, I feel oh, like. Oh, I have no Eureka. idea. Oh. Um, but I was just like, oh man, this sleep like the sleeping bags make a huge difference. <laughs> So I went and I tried to find something that wasn't huge. Like, cause I knew that Thomas's was like, it packed up to be really huge. So I wanted something that wasn't huge, but you know, was rated for a cold enough. So I just went mm-hmm. to, uh, I think it was, what's the hunting store? Cabela's. Oh, Cabela's, Cabela's yeah. yeah. I just went to Cabela's and I saw these sleeping bags. I was like, okay, this it's like, you know, whatever mountain pounds and it packs up tight. So I bought it and I've stuck with it because most of the camping we've done hasn't been in extremely cold weather. Mm, yeah. So it holds up. But since Japan, I've been thinking about doing what you're thinking about and just yeah, investing in something that's really warm, but as light as possible and you know, yeah. just get the most out of it. I need to fix my air mat before our next cold trip. Yeah, but, I've um, been saying that for like a year now. Yeah, or something. Comforts Since, for the week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I actually got something to say about that. But go ahead. <laughs> no, so mine is the uh, Marmot Ex- Aspen Explorer 20. It's 20 degrees. And I was, it was kind of similar. Like for our Dolly Sod's winter trip, I was like, okay, I'm going to need a new sleeping bag. Because actually <laughs> on that Mohican trip, I doubled up those 40 degree bags. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd think like by logic that would somehow yeah, work. No. Um, but I well, think 40 actually, times two is 80 <laughs> divided by four. How is would that 20 work? Degrees, like, right? <laughs> well, I mean, um, you would like, you, I would just be like in my head, be like, oh, so it's 20 degree rated. Yeah, that's but, what I would think. Yeah. Yeah. But, but no, it's not. <laughs> um, Definitely not. <laughs> but I think I went to like Dick's Sporting Goods, which side note, that used to be like the place I would go for camping stuff because nothing else. It was else like really the only thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was always excited to go there. But anyway, um, I've actually, I mean, I was uncomfortable in Japan and on the second night of our most recent trip, but still, I don't know. I, I, I like my sleeping bag a lot. Like it's, it's pulled me through a bunch of nights I, and it's I've had a sneaking suspicion that, well, okay. So like with down sleeping bags or under quilts, you're supposed to unpack them. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. For so sure. that they don't compact. Oh, right, right. And I do that for my down under quilt, but I never thought about it do, doing it for my sleeping bag because it's synthetic. Yeah. But I'm beginning to think that maybe I should take it out sometime yeah, yeah. and let it kind of like... You're re-poop. supposed to do that yeah. for synthetic too, I think. Because yeah. yeah. I feel like mine has been less effective. I actually, while I was researching down sleeping bags, I heard that synthetic just loses its ability to stay warm, even if you hmm. leave it That's hanging That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, cause I, I know for a fact that my, my current sleeping bag, it was warmer when I first got yeah. it because when we were at Mohican, like I was actually warm. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that was freezing weather, but that was like right after I got it. So mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, so my sleeping bag, I like it. Um, I, I actually think the main reason I was cold those couple of nights is just because I didn't have an air mat. Um, but yeah, yeah that's I, really important to have. I feel like in hindsight down is like, I don't know, natural materials. It's always the best, you know, yeah, like down sure. caribou. <laughs> Speaking of which, ever since I've had long hair, it is warm. Like <laughs> hair is unbelievably warm. Oh, like yeah. if I leave my hair down, like my neck starts like dying. <laughs> it's like, they need to make a hair sleeping bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's really what wool is essentially hair. like a yeah, wool blanket. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I guess we can maybe talk shelter about our tents. Yeah, oh, tents. Yeah. that's yeah. definitely another important okay. one. You want to start, Rob? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I guess my tent's actually the oldest. So when I first started camping in like 2007, my cousin-in-law, technically, he took me to a camping store, and he had camped all of his life. So we picked out a tent. It's the Sierra Designs Electron Two. I think mm. is Electron Two. It just says Electron on the outside, but they don't make it anymore. But that tent I've had. For literally 10 years, rock solid. It's just like the day I got it. Um, How much does it weigh? Do you know? It weighs six and a half, close to seven pounds. But uh, yeah, the problem is it's it's pretty heavy. Yeah. So we only bring it when we really need it. I feel like the between then when you bought it and now, you could, if you wanted to invest the money, you could definitely get something that was like probably two pounds lighter, yeah, yeah. if not more. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking if I get another shelter, which at this point I don't really think I will because I'm always under the tarp with Andrew, but yeah. the if I get one, it'll be a one-person shelter yeah, yeah. of some mm-hmm. sort instead of a 
two person just to cut on weight. Yeah. You can get like one person shelters that are like a pound. Yeah. I've seen. Yeah. It's not exactly spacious, but it's just a shelter. Can you use a bivy bag <clears throat> as a shelter? Like, could, do they have rain flies for those? I'm not they sure. They have rain flies. I don't. I think it would be extremely claustrophobic. Like um, Andrew's, the one that he used in Allegheny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, it was like you could kind of like fold this thing up. It would be like netting right at the head. But if you wanted to be completely waterproof, or at least, you know, water, somewhat waterproof. You could you had to fold it down and you'd have like no there'd be no mm. like air holes or anything like yeah. that. I feel like it'd be almost equivalent to like if you were in your sleeping mm. bag and just like kind of cinched yourself up yeah. inside of it. Yeah. Speaking of um one person <laughs> shelters, there's a shelter you can use a hiking pole. Yeah. It's just like a little pyramid and you use your hiking oh, yeah, pole yeah. and then like drape it over. That's what I would do if I had a tarp like yours, Andrew. I'd probably just mostly use my hiking poles to set it up and make like a A frame. Kinda like we did in um Land between the lakes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's that's going off topic. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, go ahead. Um so I have the Kelty Grand Mesa too. And actually it's technically me and Andrew's tent because it's a two person tent. Um we so our first tent was a it was Coleman. Coleman. It was Coleman. <laughs> it was a neon okay. green Coleman. And it was awful because it was a single pole. It was single pole, yeah. but that meant all the sides kept Sagging. Were, yeah, they were. They sagged in. It felt really tight, and it was just. It just wasn't. It just wasn't good. Yeah. So we got this one, um, and that was like a seventy dollars tent. Of course, you know, you always skimp on the money. You get like so so stuff. Yeah. So we mm-hmm. upgraded to this Kelty Grand Mesa too, and it's it served its purpose pretty well. It's like a middle middle like a, a middle of the road tent. Um, so it's got two poles, so it keeps you know it keeps everything like kind of spacious and open Mm -hmm. um i think if i had to complain about a couple things i think the um what is it the surface area Mm -hmm. could be a little more generous and oh and it has one door like one entry doorway i like two entry doorway yeah yeah and then also i feel like the rain fly doesn't cover enough of it because so whenever it rains pretty heavily i noticed that the bottom part of my tents um it like sags or something it's no it's just a little wet oh. around the around the edges you know like that's gonna happen a little bit yeah, but yeah. i don't know and then there was that time um when we were at clifty and i had both my boots oh yeah under the um the vestibule the or vestibule whatever. yeah and one of them was just soaking wet that's weird and i have no idea why and i <laughs> i can only assume that somehow water was dripping directly into that boot the whole night or something that's, that's really weird super weird yeah, yeah. Um, was so, it under the zipper seam or anything? Or I don't think so. But even mm. zipper even then, seam it shouldn't. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean that's the whole point. So I don't know. That it's a mystery. But for now, like <clears throat> in most weather, it, it serves its purpose. And for the amount of money we spent on it, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. So I use a tarp. It's the Equinox brand Egret tarp. It's an eight by ten, which uh, is the same tarp that I used for my. Yeah, yours is one size smaller. I think. Yeah. yeah. And then, so it's like a nice forest green color. I found this tarp because I was looking for a nylon tarp. I've I've seen people use polyurethane, which is like that really loud plasticky stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's way yeah. too heavy and yeah. awful. Oh, yeah, that would be. Yeah, terrible. I'm like, I don't want to use. But those were always the really cheap ones. And then um, the nylon ones were always like really expensive. But this one was like a nice $50, which is the cheapest one I found. Probably not going to be the lightest if you're trying to go ultra light. I want to say it's like one and a half pounds or around that. <clears throat> um not including the rope that you have to bring with it no but i mean that's like to me that's light enough it's, well it's if, a piece you, of cloth, if you go like, with like the light really light rope because it doesn't need heavy duty rope but you just have yeah, to yeah. use random well i will say i do like using thicker rope just because like the knots the adjustable knots will work better with thicker rope mm, um yeah but no i i actually like it a lot like i have noticed in really heavy rain like you'll get a few like really small drops getting through but I've stayed dry in heavy rain. Like I, I don't know if last time it's because you were just in the way of the water. No, it's just like there, it, there was too much uh, <clears throat> sag space. It was too much height. Oh, okay. Yeah, I always and, like the wind or the rain kind of yeah. came in from the side. I, I always wonder why when it when you know it's gonna rain, why you still do the elevated a frame setup. Like if it was me, I would put it much lower down to the ground. Yeah, so I guess. Less I don't chance know. of like. I mean, I think another thing that we could do, because it has four grommets on the sides and then the middle one for, like, tying it to trees. 
Um, but you could use those middle grommets to like make it even more taut. Because then rain, it would. Well, no, I mean less, it. But... It needs to be really close to the ground. There was yeah, at I least so. two feet, like yeah, yeah. two feet from the ground to where the tarp was. So there's rain just was coming. I in. will say if if you are a single person, yeah, like, then this will be yeah, yeah, you'll, yeah, it'll be perfect. More than enough. Space. Yeah. that's what I was gonna say. I was like, I just basically it doesn't really feel like enough room for two people. Yeah, and they have other sizes. They have ones that are like, I want to say ten by twelve, and maybe a size bigger than that. Yeah. So. Actually, maybe I do need to invest in my own shelter because <laughs> <So, Yeah. laughs> that's when it really counts. Like, if yeah. it's not raining, I don't care. I'll yeah. just sleep without it. Sorry. But I, get, huh? uh, I was just going to say one, uh, like, one of the disadvantages, I think, of the tarp is that technically has a pretty big um, footprint. Footprint, yeah. Because you got to, like, have all the ropes tying to everything and they come out really far yeah. out. Yeah. So your, your tarp technically takes up a lot more space than a tent would. Because the tent's Yeah, that's true. Compact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, tent but, uh, can be kind of freestanding. It's yeah. a lot easier to set up if you have trees. So if you don't, then that can be a hassle. And also, like, sometimes the ground isn't workable with, like, pegs. But I have gotten it around that. Like, I, I set up my tarp without pegs at all one time by mm -hmm. just tying it to big rocks. Um, well, so, in a sense, it's versatile. But in other ways, you know, a tent is more versatile. But that, That's one of... The, you say it's versatile, but I feel like... Well... You say it's versatile, and that's one thing I want you to do more, is I want to see you try different setups, but you yeah. always do the same setup. Well, no, no, no. I mean, we've done it. Like, diamond setup and dolly sods. The I know, but, but, no, but lately, right? you always do the A-frame setup. Yeah, I yeah. think it'd be cool if you tried a different setup. Just, I think it's just you know. mostly because the A-frame is, like, the it's, best yeah, it's for the, it's the best, shedding yeah. rain, usually. Yeah. And I guess it's because Robbie usually sleeping with you said yeah. yes. Yeah. I'm going to look at shelters, because now I'm kind of excited to try <laughs> a single-person shelter. So, the... That's I want to bring that up real quick is that when we first started camping, I think a big part of the appeal to me was like getting back to nature and just like yeah. not having a whole bunch of crap. So like I really like the idea of just being like, oh, I'm just sleeping outside with yeah, just a sleeping yeah, yeah. bag. But now we've been rained on enough times <laughs> and like especially if we're filming, I don't like being so inconvenienced by all yeah. that stuff. Like yeah. it's fun to be inconvenienced and like roughing it, but <laughs> Not when you're trying to film. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it pays to be prepared, you know? Like, you can do hiking, and if you get rained on while you're hiking, you get wet. You're just going to completely be miserable if you don't have a, at least a tent to climb into and yeah, yeah. hang up your clothes or something. So, it, it's I think it's more of... It's like that better safe than sorry kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, is there any other specific things we want to talk about in this? I can talk about my hammock, too. Okay, yeah, go I for it. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so... Um, the hammock that I got is called the Hennessy, or well, it's a Hennessy brand, and it's called the Expedition Asym or the Asymmetrical. Um, and the reason it's called the Asymmetrical is because, like, when you think of a hammock, you think of like two Ooh. ends, you know, tied to a tree, and you just kind of lie, yeah, yeah, lie yeah. in it. But in this one, they say that the best way to lie in a hammock so that you're not curving your back too much is to lie like at an angle, like diagonally. Yeah. So yeah. this is kind of like parallelogram shaped if you would to, were to lay it out so that uh oh god i don't know how to explain it Through um, words like okay so if this if this was the shape of the tent right uh you, well for those listening you can't really uh, yeah. see yeah, it yeah, so, so so if this was the tent technically it would be hanging from this corner and this corner on the trees and you'd be lying across like that sort of it's oh, like it's like your yeah. head is on one side of the ridge line and your feet yeah. are on the other side oh interesting yeah. okay yeah and yeah. that's kind of like why it's called the asymmetrical but another another thing about the hennessy hammocks that you know they kind of advertise their bottom entry and i got this hammock around <laughs> <laughs> sorry i said bottom not behind <laughs> okay um continue sorry <laughs> if i hadn't looked at andrew i would have been fine <laughs> well we've made plenty of jokes when i get out of my hammock <laughs> okay go on. um so when i was researching hammocks this was like right after all of our summer trips in um, Michigan mm -hmm. because it was so hot and there were so many bugs. I was like, oh, oh man, yeah. I want a hammock. That would be probably better in the hot weather. But then I was thinking about, you know, when you climb into a hammock, it's not like a tent where you can just like jump in and close the yeah, door. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You got to like open it and then kind of settle yourself in and close it up. I was like, oh man, you know, it'd be terrible as if you were in a hammock, all comfortable. And then you just like had like five mosquitoes trapped in there with you. Oh God. <laughs> so I was like, I don't worse. want any of that. So the bottom entry is a Velcro, and what you do is there's, there's Velcro in the bottom of the hammock on one half, and you open it up, 
and you kind of like sit down and then you when you pull your feet in the tension that your body creates when you're sitting in the hammock uh, put like pulls the velcro back yeah, together yeah. Wow, so it's like brilliant yeah so it minimizes the amount of time that things open and i was like okay well this is probably keep this will probably keep most of the bugs out and, and it works really well um i think the only thing about it is that it's really annoying to get out of um and you can't well two things so with a with a side entry like zipper hammock you can open the zipper and then just kind of like lounge <laughs> in your hammock yeah yeah um but this one you really can't do that you have to go in yeah and also so like whenever i get in my hammock it's like I'm getting in this hammock and I'm not getting out. <laughs> <laughs> so like if I, if I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, it's like, it is like a conflict in my brain. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, I got to get out. But that means I'm going to have to fiddle around and get in my sleeping bag, get out of my sleeping bag and then like sh- get through that Velcro and get my boots on. And it's just, Oh, it's awful. I like, will, I will say that's one of my favorite things about a tarp though, is that you're just unencumbered yeah. completely. Yeah. yeah. That's the type of thing that you can only know from using gear mm, yeah like yeah, yeah. that's the that's what we've been talking about you have to find out what you like and you don't yeah. like and like what's super important yeah. to you and what's not that important yeah each person has different priorities basically yeah, yeah yeah another thing that i don't like about hammocks um is that um when you're trying when you're trying to get into a sleeping bag when you're in a hammock it's really tough because oh. you're like shifting your weight but the, like the hammock kind of moves with you so you're just kind of like trying to like wriggle your way into your sleeping bag. And then after like five minutes of wrestling, you're out of breath. And you're finally like, <sighs> and you're like zipping it up. And then you're finally in your sleeping bag. And then that's like another reason like you never want to get out yeah, of the yeah, hammock yeah. until I'm like sure. the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, you still bring your tents on occasion. Like what's your mindset or thought If process? I'm expecting bad weather, especially rain or very cold weather, I'll bring my tent. Mm. Um, just because I know... The tent's definitely, 100% definitely going to protect me from the rain better than my hammock if you've all watched Wayne. We yeah. still haven't <laughs> tested the, like, we you see, the hammock still hasn't been through a rain test. With yeah, the I haven't tarp. been yeah. through an actual rain test. I think it will be now. Yeah. Because we talked about Wayne and it was more of a, the way I set it up was an yeah. issue because it wasn't, like, taut enough. Um, but I think what I might do actually is eventually invest in a legit hammock um, rain fly, which is, like, hexagonal shaped. Mm. Mm, then, yeah. It just it's just enough to cover it. Like yeah. it's, it's like guaranteed coverage. Um, but yeah, so if I'm expecting bad weather or cold weather, I bring my tent. Um, with my underquilt, I know that I can deal with like chilly weather, mm-hmm. like 40 degrees. I haven't tested it anything below that though, and I guess I'm just a little nervous. Like I don't want to go out there with my hammock and just yeah. have a miserable time. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to just test it sometime. Test it in the backyard yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Uh, so is, is there any other equipment you guys... I mean, we could talk about like rain jackets and stuff, but I feel like all there is to say about I, that is get a good one. I think we should talk about our water bladders because oh, platypus the, yeah, yeah. isn't really... Camelback, I think, is the big, very well-known oh, yeah, brand, yeah, yeah. right? Okay. And Nicole had a Camelback, right? But I think I don't the, like plat- the, way yeah, those I think work the platypus design is simple. Is Camelback where you like unscrew the Yeah, thing? the Camelback There's has a like a huge opening. Front. Yeah. 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 And it's like weird because you can't really... Uh, it's just kind of weird to fill up yeah. if you wanted to fill it up all the way because yeah, you kind of yeah. like have to lay it down. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. If you're doing it in the sink, that's inconvenient. I guess if you have like a water filter thing, like like a Brita filter, and you could put it if on the counter. If you had a filter like, that attached directly yeah. to it, that yeah. makes sense. But the platypus is just, it's so simple. It has and just a very forward. small hole at the yeah. very top. Yeah. yeah. So you stick your filter hose in and then you just fill it up yeah yeah oh yeah yeah i didn't even think about that refilling Mm -hmm. it while you're out there yeah Yeah. and it was so weird because i like we got the platypus i'd never used a camelback before that and it just made so much sense to me and when i saw a camelback i was like what what yeah like who who would think that would be the first thing that would be the best i'm actually curious (laughs) if anyone has a design what you like about it versus like our our platypus design you, you mean, mean other people? Back? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. not us. Yeah, no. yeah, because we haven't used it extensively, so maybe yeah. people who have used Camelback. Yeah, a lot and th- that's the other thing is we all have the same brand because mm. this is what we yeah. gravitated towards. So I'm curious if there's other designs out there that like we don't even know about that are we way so better. Syntax seventy seven seventy seven or seventy one. Seventy seven. Okay, Syntax seventy seven. He had a video. I didn't <clears> watch it, but the the he was talking about our water bladder is worth it. And he's he, the at the beginning he said sometimes he brings them sometimes he doesn't, mm-hmm. but um, just off the top of my head I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't want a water bladder, like they're super light and they hold 
I feel like water. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like for in terms of space used and weight saved, I think a water bladder has got to be the most efficient, right? That's what I would have thought. Because but... to carry two Nalgene's mm. versus one water bladder. But you bring the Nalgene for a specific purpose, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, for cooking, if, right? I, yeah, I bring it for cook. It's easy access for when I want to pour like into a pot or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're going I mean, we can talk about that later. But okay. What were yeah. you saying about? You were saying about syntax, like is no, it that was it. Water I was just curious if there, you guys had any reason why I was going to say bring an the algae. one reason I could see is if like you're going to a place where you know there's going to be streams everywhere, um, mm-hmm. you can fill up constantly. That way, every time you fill up, it's not this whole ordeal where you're pulling oh, the blender because those yeah. are hard to get in. That's, sometimes. Yeah. okay. That's a great yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, the other thing is like if you if you really do want to boil something and you have like a metal water bottle, I guess you could use that too. Yeah, but that's well. True. I will say, um, okay, well, on that subject, yes, I think it is easier when you're using Nalgene's, especially depending on what backpack you have, mm-hmm. it's just easier to put, like, put Nalgene's in the little side pockets. That's true. Um, rather than having to dig it out, fill it up, like kind of put it back in its little designated yeah. spot. Um, but one thing I do notice ever since I've gotten the platypus versus when we bring Nalgene's is that, okay, so if a Nalgene's like back here, it's easy to get out usually, mm-hmm. but then it's really annoying to put back. And mm. with the platypus, you know, or any sort of water bladder, it's supposed to be like easy access. And I never drank enough water when we were hiking, when we brought Nalgene's. Because yeah, it's just like, yeah. oh, it's just, oh. You drink it and then you just. Mm. You almost have to pull the know. other person's out. and like, yeah. yeah. You'd be like, oh, can you put this back for me and you hand it to them? That, you know, that's a good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just everybody holds somebody else's water. Although yeah. I will say, I, I can't find my hose a lot just because the clip fell off. So it never stays <laughs> in place. Um, well, see, that's actually, that's something that's small in my backpack that I really like. It actually has solid. a built-in clip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and cool. it keeps it perfectly in place. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with the water hose, it's just so easy to just drink, you know. You make sure you can keep yourself hydrated. Yeah. I always have a problem with when I not went solo them. in the Smokies. There were these older guys, and they had essentially what's like a cloth bucket thing, and you just fill it up with water. And at the bottom is a spout that carbon filters it when it comes oh, out. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So I wonder if they so have they a, like bring it to camp. Yeah, and I wonder if they have any sort of bladder like that because that'd be really easy if they just had the carbon filter right no, where the nozzle connects hoses the hose. with a filter oh really it. yeah because then you could just fill it up without even pumping anything yeah. and that'd be great. nicole has one it's mm. it like the hose literally has the filter built into it so you just fill the mm. thing up and then you can drink it because it is it, fil- it filters through it as you drink um so quick aside that we probably should have mentioned at the very beginning so i don't know what we're gonna call this video yet we're still thinking about that but just looking at this everything that we showed on the video for at least for me mm-hmm. is essential mm-hmm like this is all essential gear and I need something it, it, like, even if I didn't bring this exact item, I would need something to substitute it. If mm, I hadn't yeah, yeah. brought it, you know, mm-hmm. is that like that the same for you guys? Is there anything that for the you most would part, uh, the saw sell? is probably not essential, but <laughs> I mean, I, like I say, I switch between my hammock and my tent. If I were to but say you need a shelter. Yeah. You need yeah. a shelter. Yeah, my yeah. trail stool is definitely not essential. Um, but I think that helps me a lot. Yeah. And then, Hiking poles really depend on the terrain. If you're hiking flat terrain, like what we did in Yellowstone, yeah. hiking poles, you don't really need those. It's, it's super easy. Yeah, yeah, it depends on terrain But a if lot. you're doing yeah. any good amount of uphill or downhill, I mean, you guys don't Which, use hiking poles, but for me, it makes a world of no, difference. No, yeah, like we, we didn't use them in Japan. But I so, had a walking stick the whole time. Right, but they would have helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, and, and they I, my pillow is not essential. <laughs> but... Yeah. More, I mean, it more like give or take. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, while we're on the topic of water, we could talk about like cooking pots and stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, so the main one that I use is the what is it? MSR Alpine Stowaway Pot. Um, there's also like some other stuff that we mentioned, but so the Stowaway Pot is basically like this. Um, I want to say it's a mix between a pan and a pot in terms of how deep it is, and it's lightweight, uh, stainless steel. I always like stainless steel because that's like, I just trust that for something that you can put on the fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's got a nice lid and a foldable handle. That I like a lot. Um, I used to use the Stanley Camp 24 ounce cook set. It's basically like this tall billy can. I imagine it'd be most useful if you're like, those kind of things are designed for the gas stoves. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, although, yeah. I will say. I don't know. It's good for like liquid and stuff, but other than that, I feel like it's not versatile enough for well, me to want to bring. Like, I feel like your billy can and my billy can, mm-hmm. which it <laughs> was Robbie's at one point. <laughs> <laughs> he just gave it to me. Those things are specifically di- designed yeah. for a yeah, person yeah. with 
who, with the mindset of like, I'm bringing this kind of meal where you just pour it in and yeah, water yeah, exactly. and boil it. Well, also, you know? it's not made for putting on a fire. Yeah, it's not like, made for putting made on a fire. Yeah. On a propane yeah. stove. It's yeah, not made yeah. for cooking like a stew or something yeah, yeah. or like, you know, making some sort of elaborate meal. Right, yeah. yeah. I will say, um, if you are using like, if you're not using one of those store-bought stoves and you're like trying to use one of those like food can stoves that you make yourself... I've had trouble setting mine on my like little gas stove. Yeah, Super cat stove. Um, the the other problem I don't like about it is like mm. the lid has a it originally comes with like a plastic handle, which again is not a problem if you're using a stove. But like I got it because it was stainless steel, and I think it's always good to have something you can cook on the fire. And if you get it on the fire, then eventually that thing can start melting if you're well, yeah, not careful. Yeah, and that's like the mine too the, it's the, the handle got rubber yeah. around the handle yeah yeah so i mean clearly it's not designed for that right. kind of use so i mean it, the lids, it, entire lids plastic yeah. <laughs> in a way it's like it, it, it depends on what your style is if you yeah. are just going to be making meals on the stove then fine but yeah, yeah. so you got to think just, about what you yeah. how you plan on doing that and but for me it's all about stainless steel and then i have like a large pot um i forget what it's called now i don't think it's on you didn't list. write it down no, it just says bigger pot, but it's it's in the video. <laughs> yeah, it's the one and, we made our stew in on Algonquin. Yeah, and the only reason I got that is because it has some like a handle in the middle that you can actually hang it from yeah. something. Well, you got it just yeah. so be, you have more room. To that work too, yeah. yeah. So that's great if you're like it's still pretty lightweight actually. Like and you it's don't super necessarily lightweight. bring it all the time. No. Yeah. But that's if I'm cooking something big for multiple yeah. people, and I mean I I actually am pretty happy with that. Like it's it's unnecessary weight if you're just going on your own, but it's actually yeah. not even that heavy. So. And a packing. Uh, space saving packing tip is put food inside yeah, yeah. your cans and stuff Always, like that. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. We forgot to show toilet paper. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, because uh, me and Brian <laughs> use toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so we do bring a roll of toilet paper yeah. for. I mean, that's pretty straightforward, though. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring your toilet paper of choice. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. But always, oh, make sure you always pack it in a Ziploc bag because oh, you do not want that to get wet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like some people probably have forgotten to do that at some point or another. And then oh, they open their sure, zipper yeah. and this That would be devastating. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. um, but yeah, going back to cookware real quick. Mm -hmm. One item that I will definitely bring on the next trip, which I don't know why it never occurred to me before, but in the mornings, like that's, especially when it's cold, like that's the most brutal time between when you first get up and you get the fire started. Mm. So I'm like, next time we go, I'm going to get one of those little propane stoves, just like Thomas had it in Yosemite. So we can at least get a hot drink mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, while yeah. we're getting the fire set up. That's what I was thinking of getting to. Actually, um, my solo stove. Well, we'll get around to talking my solo stove. But um, no, you can just talk about. I was going to say something though. Well, the the point of the gas stove is because I'm so far beyond like trying to do everything like the the roughing it way or like the, the super cool way <laughs> yeah, where you yeah. make everything yourself. I'm like, look, sometimes I just want a hot drink and like we need, if we had a gas stove, we could just turn that mug on, yeah, heat the yeah, water, yeah. have some coffee and then get to yeah. getting all the fire started and all that stuff. It, it used to be where I would, I once, I remember I saw someone who was camping with a gas stove, but they were carrying like a, a container that was kind of like that big. And then it had a hose leading up to like their little stove. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, that looks like too much work. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But now it's just like a little... That you makes way more it on sense. Top of yeah. the propane yeah, tank, and the propane yeah. tank's like this small, so it seems a lot more convenient yeah. than it did back then when I first saw it. So I've been considering getting yeah. it too. So, but yeah, you do have a solo stove, and we cook mm -hmm. with that all the time. So why yeah. don't you talk about that? Yeah. So my solo stove is actually it's a wood burning stove, and it's supposed to be designed to like promote airflow so that you can keep the um, fire the little fire going inside. And for all intents and purposes, it works well. But the yeah. thing I need to say is that. It does not work if you want to cook like multiple people's food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it is definitely designed for you to cook like one meal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like boil a drink or something. Yeah, because you constantly have to throw more and more twigs in there. Yeah, and if it goes out, it becomes a pain in the butt to um <laughs> <laughs> to restart because it's designed for the ashes pain in the bottom yeah. entry. <laughs> 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 the ashes fall through this right. metal grate so that they don't you know, suffocate the fire. Yeah. Um, so you can't actually like use the embers to restart the fire. So you have to be vigilant and sit there and watch it and throw twigs in. Yeah. Um, but, but when you do get it going, it, it cooks a meal really fast. Yeah. Um, but I actually bought, but never used these little fuel cubes. Oh yeah. Oh. And I wanted to test them, but I, I think I bought them for Yellowstone. But oh I really? Want, I, yeah, but I didn't want to bring them on the plane or something. I don't remember. Hmm. Um, I just never ended up using them. 
Um, but I feel like I, I bought them with the intention of like if it was raining or something, I could just light it and it would like self burn long enough for me to cook something. Um, but I don't know. Like I said, I haven't tried it. I guess I'll try it this weekend or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's but funny. Bottom line is, is that the solo stove is literally named for what it is. Yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. solo stove. <laughs> I was going to say, it's funny how like a campfire is kind of the best thing for when, um, you're trying to cook for a group setting. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But, uh, I don't know what else. I feel like a lot of the stuff on here is just sort of like you should find your own stuff. So like the paradox base layer shirt, um, we we well, have these. I think something that we have enough experience with to at least <clears throat> talk about is like kind of talk about what people should at least be looking for when they're yeah they're yeah because sometimes yeah. people literally have no idea what they want or need. So so some items that I think you don't need to like get a specific type, but you should mm -hmm. definitely have these raincoat. Uh, base layer type stuff. Yeah. Uh, I would say um, that if you, when you Unisoft. get a raincoat, <laughs> one, make sure it has a hood. I don't know why you would ever buy a raincoat without a hood. But they have ones that don't have hoods? Yeah. What? Well, well some what? people might buy like, they. I, I don't know, some people might. Actually, Scott was wearing one without a hood. Yeah. Oh. But I, I would imagine that had a removable hood. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, but just in case, you know. But make sure the hood is big enough. Yeah, too. Okay, make wait, sure wait. the hood is Before big enough. Before we get into the details mm. of rain jackets, <laughs> just like if we're talking about like basic guide, mm. you need the big three, right? The big three, the backpack, the shelter, the sleeping bag. Right. And then you, the, you need a few essentials on top of that. Yeah. Rain jacket's one of them. Well, I would say, I mean, besides like, food and stuff you need a water filter this, yeah. if, if you're, you're gonna, backpacking if you're going for any yeah, extended yeah. period yeah. water filter rain jacket uh, extra pair of clothing like a base yeah. layer that's really warm yeah and then headlamp mm -hmm. headlamp yes headlamp especially if you uh if you're the kind of person who somehow always manages to no headlamp is essential yeah i would it, say yeah no headlamp essential. is absolutely yeah like, you I, have to have that i would say water filter or a reliable means of boiling water um like it boiling water well, it depends is, though it's way less efficient but it's not impossible to do that if you're back yeah but, yeah. yeah but at that point you might as well own a water filter <clears throat> You know, no, I know. I'm just yeah. saying, like, I, th I think you easily water could. source. <laughs> That's what you yeah, yeah, water yeah. purification. Whatever Actually, you could is, do. Yeah. You could bring iodine tablets. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be technically sufficient. Yeah, but for like, <clears throat> if you're traveling in a group like us, I met an ultralighter who had these little purifying like droplets that you would just drop oh, a yeah, thing in cool. the water and. Um, yeah, uh, so I that, that I think on. that's it though. Like as far as like essentials though, like yeah. the, what we just listed out. Do you guys think a knife is essential? I actually do. Um just because, like, there's so many things you can do with it in so many instances where you yeah. might need one. Like, because a lot of people, it's not something you're going to be using to, like, stab a bear or anything, but it's just something where, like, <laughs> oh, I got to, like... Um, you never know when you need to, like, sharpen a stick or, like, to, like... Even a starting a fire, like a it's... Hiking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or, or feather sticking. Or adjusting um, ropes on a shelter, things like yeah, that. Yeah, cutting rope. Or even, like, getting a splinter out or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've never been on a trip without a knife. I haven't brought one, but yeah, I yeah. always know that you'll have one. Yeah. So we could so talk about those. I've got, I've got an sure. idea. What we could do is we could the less essential items. We could go through them and then kind of like give one thing that we think is an important feature to have of that particular item. You know what I mean? So like if you if I were to go shopping for like a headlamp, right? Mm -hmm. What's one thing you you would tell me to look for in a headlamp? Mm, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. You want to just do that for every all the essentials? Or do you want to... Okay, yeah. We can just start from the top. So, um, backpack. So, backpack. Yeah. Um, that's essential. Durability. Uh, good fit, I think. Yeah, yeah. I was going to go with good fit, too. Like, that's... Yeah. A Actually, to add thing. on to that, don't buy a backpack online. Go to a you store. You got to try it. Yeah. You yeah, got to try yeah, it yeah. on. Yeah. It yeah. may be an appropriate size based on your try, At least try it on, but, and then you can buy the same one online. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, shelter. Shelter. Um. For me, it would be... Waterproof. <laughs> waterproof. Yeah. Waterproof. Yeah. <laughs> but beyond that, it's like personal preference. Oh, I think it really is. Personal weight preference. is kind of like a big one for me. Mm -hmm. as far I think. As that goes. I think technically, weight is like kind of like a thing in the back. That's of the a mind. general yeah, thing a general for everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much do you care yeah. about weight, and how traumatic have your experiences been? <laughs> <with weight>? yeah, <laughs> yeah. And how steep are the hills that you're yeah. making? All right. What about um, sleeping bags? Sleeping bags. Uh, for me, it's like it's got to be warm. Mm -hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. 
I can't skimp on mm. like temperature ratings. Yeah. So like I get as warm as possible. It doesn't matter to me. Like it can be like burning hot outside and I'll still be fine in a super warm sleeping bag. I'll mm. just like open it up. Yeah. So I just like <clears throat> as warm as possible Yeah. for me. Yeah. To me, I always just think warmth versus compactability. Oh, it's always safer to be warm basically. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Cause you can always, like you said, unzip it or not even use it. You could just sleep yeah. on top of it if it's hotter, but Man, if it's cold and you don't have a good sleep, warm sleeping bag, you're gonna regret it. Yeah. Um, I guess one thing for me would be to make sure it packs down well enough. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we've all seen. Yeah, my sleeping bag. my sleeping bag is so big. <laughs> At this point, like anything smaller would just yeah. be like great. And then you got the compression sack, and it's like yeah. a world of difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's I mean, so it's cool. a lot smaller, but it's like so tight that it feels like <laughs> if you Dense. touch it, it's gonna burst. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So, I think we kind of went over the water bladder pretty in detail. Yeah. Um, water filter, water filter. Well, we've only ever used one kind. Yeah. So we've only ever used one. Make sure your water filter, the filter inside is fresh. Yeah. Cause once that thing starts going out, it is very difficult to pump it. Like yeah. we've experienced yeah. that with my old, mm-hmm. my old filter. Then you got one yeah. and that filter starting to go out and it's starting to get really hard to pump yeah. that thing. So we man. need to buy filters. Um, I would say one thing is, um, think carefully about the design of the pump. Um, cause when you start pumping like, your fourth liter of water, you get really tired. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so make sure it's a design that makes sense. I've only ever seen the Katadin one. Yeah, so I've seen, oh, I don't I've seen even ones know that if are like this, like kind of like you. Push oh, like that, that seems better. Know. Like a better design. Uh, for cooking apparatuses, I would say the main thing you're looking for there is just like multiple uses so you want something stainless steel so you can use it on the yeah. fire you want something that's like the right ratio and size so yeah. you can cook whatever mm-hmm. stuff like that well also think about how you're going to be cooking it yeah so like mm-hmm. are you going to be cooking things on the fire or you can actually bring a little stove yeah it's yeah, yeah. like the one that you have that i used to have that one is great for a, a little portable stove but it's got so much rubber and plastic on it that if you use it the on lid the fire, is plastic like, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's not so yeah. like we boil water in that thing all the time yeah but like we probably drink like 25% of the water is just ash because we can't put the lid <laughs> yeah, on it so we're cooking the, it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely think about the type of preference and I guess yeah. your stainless food steel. Type like I just stainless steel all the way for me. Yeah. That's stainless steel is great, man. Yeah. Was that thunder? That sounded like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, okay. So the, the under base layer and mm-hmm. so I, I've been using the same base layer since like 2000. You're talking about like um, clothes? Six. Yeah, yeah, the clothes. It's just a random pair of Nike tights and Under Armour tights Mm -hmm. or a tight shirt. And then I've got smart wool socks. But the... For me, that's super essential because like I get cold all the time. Yeah, I feel like it it varies between us. Like for me, I always... If I know it's going to get cold, you know, I'll bring like a base, like a thermal base layer. Yeah. But generally for me, what I like to bring is... I always go long sleeve for the most part, mm-hmm. but like loose mm. so that it's so that it's like like if it's windy or whatever, I can like mm. keep cool because I like the long sleeves and the long pants to keep, you know, bugs, thorns, yeah. anything off my legs or arms yeah. while we're hiking. For me, I definitely like long pants uh, sleeves. I don't care as much about if it's warm. Um, but I will say, yeah, like the base layer, that's the least you should have if it's going to be at all like cool or anything. Yeah. Um, and then, like, obviously, you're going to put stuff over that if it's colder. But yeah, base layer, yeah. I mean, you just having plan that. accordingly, basically. Yeah. yeah, having that tight layer on your skin, it, it really yeah. helps when you're trying to yeah. keep warm. Um, oh, you know what we can talk about real quick? is Because um, people have asked about this many times. My hiking pants. So it's oh, actually yeah, yeah. these right here. Mm-hmm. This is uh, a brand called Outlier. Uh, we didn't talk about it in the gear video. But um, it's called Outlier. And if you just Google Outlier, it's like a men's clothing brand. And um, they're very expensive, but they're also super nice pants. Mm-hmm. It's like the only pair you own, right? Yeah. Well, I have yeah. two now, but okay. um, the other one's slightly different. But like yeah. to clarify, the only pair of pants at all, right? Like you only have two pairs of pants. If three, and that's how reliable. <laughs> but it the is. third one's like my old hiking pants, yeah. which I will say that get like they sell a lot of like hiking pants, like those uh, convertible ones that'll mm-hmm. turn into shorts and pants. Those are almost always too thin. Yeah. So like I actually don't recommend really? those. Like if you saw in the early episodes those brown the tan yeah. pants. Tan pants. <laughs> Just the same tan pants Thomas wears. Those are too thin. I think I that's like. personal preference that they're too thin for you because mm, Yeah, yeah, cuz like cold. I my so I used to wear these all the time. Like uh some Adidas trainers yeah, basically. Like, track suit like pants. <laughs> <laughs> um 
Uh, but then I recently switched to something that was actually a thinner, uh, lighter material, which would like be terrible for you, but it's yeah. great for me because it keeps me cool. And if it rains, yeah, like it I'll wear a raincoat, so it'll keep my top fine, but you know my pants will get wet regardless. But they're so thin and lightweight, they dry off mm. like within thirty minutes, mm. which is what I was looking for. Because last time it rained and I was in these, they were just wet for like the whole night. Oh. Can we do a quick tangent and talk about how Japanese hikers? are the most well-equipped <laughs> people you've ever seen in your life. Like they're always wearing like the, every single person without fail had like from head to toe, like the best gear. <laughs> like you were looking at like that down coat and like the down snow well, pants. Did you, the prices of the Gore-Tex shoes and yeah. The, well, the prices they have there seem a lot more affordable than here. Uh, well I went to the camping store. Oh, they're not affordable. <laughs> well, a lot of stuff at Uniglow seemed pretty cheap. Yeah. Well, I mean that's that, I don't think that's specifically camping gear. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's just clothing and stuff. Do your pants have belt loops by the way? Yeah, they do. Yeah, I might need to get something like that. Cause I, I wear like Costco pants and, they're fine, yeah. but they can tear sometimes, and they're cotton. So, oh, actually, that brings up a good point. I want to talk about, uh, so just in general, price versus performance mm-hmm. versus when should you buy new gear? When should you stick with what you have? What is the process for getting gear? Because I got my thoughts. What are you guys' thoughts? You mean like uh, if you were starting? Just in, well, I'll go ahead and start, and you guys yeah. can add on to this. So for me. I feel like use what you have Mm -hmm. and then go on a few trips and just, if they're total failures, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like when we went to the Smokies the first time, that was like our first time backpacking ever. Yeah. Me and Andrew were trying to boil water with his alcohol stove. (laughs) 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 Let me tell you, that was our only source of water and that is not a good way to get water. Yeah. And like we ran into those other guys uh, earlier when we were all together who had the water filter and then ever since then we've had a water filter but like that's one of those things that you can't really know Mm. unless you do a bunch of research ahead of time but i mean that's totally not us yeah (laughs) um if you just go out and do it you'll find out what are the things that really do work and really don't work Mm -hmm. and like as far as gear and stuff like i've been using my sleeping bag for 10 years and well not 10 years however long and i know what i don't do like about it now yeah and like it's definitely time for me to change it because there's parts of it i just cannot stand anymore yeah but the, you can only get that from the experience yeah yeah I, I mean a lot really is just experience you there's really no other way yeah um but i would say if you like your viewer just didn't have any idea go with the essentials you, i mean you always need the essentials you need a backpack you need a tent and you need a sleeping bag and i would say never skimp on those three. Oh mm-hmm. yeah um mm-hmm. you don't have to you know you don't Break have to spend bank. thousands yeah. of dollars yeah, on, yeah. on it, but like, don't go for like a budget Coleman brand or yeah. any of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Walmart, the things that you would see in Walmart, um, and you should be okay at least for your first few trips, and then from there on, you can learn what you need um, and how, like, what what items you would need that fit your camping style. I feel basically. like there are certain things you can skimp on. Uh, like, oh yeah, there's definitely like a backpack cover. A rain jacket, even like I don't think you need a super pricey one. No. You just yeah. want something that just keeps something you dry. That works, yeah. Yeah. Same with a base layer, as long as it keeps you warm enough. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Um, There's definitely yeah, things the... that you can, quote unquote, skimp on. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But those three things, I would definitely like if I had known back then. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. every they every single one of those, I started out buying something cheap. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't yeah. spend too much money. I bought a cheap yeah. tent, yeah. like a seventy dollar tent. I bought like a thirty dollar sleeping bag. Yeah. And uh, in the end, you end up buying more. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like a sixty dollar backpack, and in the end, I replaced them all like instantly. Yeah. 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 I kind of feel like the say people when they talk about cameras, they say buy the best camera you can afford, mm. and I feel like it's the same thing for gear. Just buy the best thing you can afford, mm-hmm. and like if you're only going to be using it once, maybe in that case, just buy yeah. the cheapest thing. But if you actually want to make this like yeah. a hobby where you go all the time, yeah, because the best thing because if get. you the more the. You're, if you spend the money on it, that's going to last you longer. So you get technically get a better value out of it. You're going to be more comfortable during mm-hmm. the duration of your trip. Like you don't want to go camping and backpacking and be uncomfortable. Like yeah. that defeats the entire purpose. Well, I mean, especially if you spend the money on something actually good, like it's kind of hard to know before yeah. you buy it, whether it's actually going to last. Yeah. But like my tent, it is 10, it's 10 years old, legitimately yeah. mm-hmm. 10 years old. Now that thing cost me $250 
and it's been like it's like the day I got it. Yeah. So if I had to rate in order of importance which ones you should not skimp out, like which ones you should actually spend the money on for, the big for, for those three, yeah, mm-hmm. I would go sleeping bag first, backpack first. I definitely. would have gone. Oh, I would do backpack second. I would do de- sleeping bag first section really? too. Yeah, and then well, tent is last for sure. I feel like sleeping bag as long as you don't like. Like, if you were to buy, like, a, a cheaper sleeping bag, but it was rated for the proper temperatures, mm, yeah. you'd be okay for several trips. But a backpack, you're carrying that thing literally, like, the entire day. Yeah. It's a toss-up because, uh, like, sleeping see, bag is, like, survival. Like, if you have a crappy backpack or just not a stellar backpack, mm-hmm. then you're just uncomfortable. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. To me, yeah, to me, it's, like, a uncomfortable backpack is still something I can deal with. You can stop and rest. You can take it off. A sleeping bag... If it's not good enough, you're gonna have a really rough night, and that's yeah. way harder to do. And that with compounds. For me. Like yeah, the yeah. next day's worse. The next day's worse. Or that's why I put sleeping bag for. Well, also I also think about like in the 1800s, people had like crappy rucksacks and baskets that they carried. So it's like <laughs> if that was good enough for them, then yeah. But they were using like furs and caribou skins to sleep in. So it's like yeah. yeah. So that's well, I guess that's it depends on your definition of skimp and how much we're skimping. Like if we're talking about like, yeah, you don't want to get a bag at walmart that'll yeah, fall yeah, apart yeah. you know but like i mean if you got like a budget like 60 70 dollar yeah. i don't know i don't know what a what a budget camping backpack would be mm-hmm. but you can spend under a hundred dollars and yeah. generally be okay yeah yeah uh do you want to talk about ultralight ones are like 250 dollars yeah. <laughs> like uh it's like hyper light mountain gear or something mm. like oh use. we saw one of those right yeah somebody yeah. was carrying in japan but man those are expensive they're super light, apparently. Though. <laughs> a knife is something you can skimp on and still get a good quality thing. That's true. Yeah. That's a Mora knife. Why don't you talk about all those knives? <laughs> um, you start with my knife because that's the cheapest one, right? Oh, right. Yeah. So yours is the Mora... What is it? The it says com- Mora Knife Craftline Basic 511. Yeah. It's like the red handle. It's a nice rubber handle. So they have a basic model that's like a wooden thing, but I actually... Even, as, even though it's like a classic look, I don't like it because the handle's slippery. There's no guard. Yours is a rubber handle... It's nice and secure no, in the hands. No, it's not. It's plastic. Oh, it's plastic, but still, it's grippy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's is it carbon steel? I think it is. I don't know. But <laughs> basically, Mora knives you can get like for eight to fifteen dollars, and it'll be really sharp and really usable. Yeah. Um, I have a Mora Bushcraft Triflex, which they don't make anymore. They have a Bushcraft Black knife now, which is like, I think my knife was like twenty four dollars, but now they're like maybe forty fifty bucks. For the bushcraft knife, Andrew went through this phase where he was really obsessed with his. Knives. Oh yeah, he was like sharpening them like every day. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. that that particular bushcraft <laughs> knife is more expensive, but it is actually also better because the spine is ground correctly and stuff. Mm. And the other knife I has a Condor Bush Lore, which, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like their knives. Why it's, do you you use that one like the most? Why? I just like how it looks mostly. Oh. It's, I, mean, I, I, I do think, like how it looks too. Yeah. <laughs> it looks awesome. Yeah. Um, um, I think, so with that one, like I ground it into a convex grind. So basically it's like a really durable, um, edge. So you can like split wood with it. And it's also got the full tang and it's a thicker blade. Uh, that, that's some of the stuff. If you're like carving something, then you want a thinner, sharper knife, like a Mora, but yeah, yeah. let's talk about my knife. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the buck. My buck knife. I literally bought that knife because I was like, I'm going camping this is an excuse to buy a knife. <laughs> so I went to Walmart. I saw this knife and I thought it looked cool and I bought it. Yeah. Uh, but it turns out it's actually a d- pretty decent knife. You've had it forever. Yeah. But to be fair though, it doesn't nearly get as much use as Andrew's knife. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because since Andrew usually does most of that stuff, most of the cutting, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it served its purpose. Les Stroud I, used it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only thing that I would say an issue with it is, well, the blade design, Andrew's. It's Andrew's not a fan of that kind of blade design. Um, well, I like it, but yeah. um, I mean, but I think it looks cool at least. <laughs> it's, it's heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because of the handle, the handle's like, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's all metal, but the handle's very slick since it's it's like a smooth. It's not like plasticky, grippy yeah, feel, yeah. and then the the whole thing is just. It's probably, got a big guard. Yeah, it's it's like a classic. Uh, why are those a Bowie knife? Yeah. yeah. But um, it's also, it's, the blade on that is six inches, and like a lot of bushcraft knives are like hovering around four. Oh. I would say so. that if we were to split wood, though, mine is definitely probably Oh, yeah, that's use. great. Yeah. 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 Um, Sturdy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, I want to talk about headlamps really quick. Cool. Yeah. Um, 
When oh, because that you use as an example of what should you look for in a headlamp. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So specifically, especially if you're buying something like a flashlight or something, don't get a flashlight. Don't get a lamp. Oh, my God. We used headlamp. to use flashlights. Yeah. We, the big, I, heavy we mag brought lights. Flashlight. <laughs> oh, my God. We were so dumb a long time ago. We so brought bad. those D battery mag flashlights. And we were like, oh, yeah, these are going to be super bright. And it wasn't oh even. God. Those things are, what, no. like five pounds? No. Yeah. Oh, my God. I hate regular flashlights that use regular batteries they drain batteries yeah. like if you leave the batteries in there it's just they drain and then no, when you yeah. actually need it it's like well it's out of batteries. when it comes to a light source there's like no debating yeah. headlamp or bus yeah. yeah headlamp because you need both hands, hands free. free yeah and hands free and get something that's bright and it's always where you mm-hmm. look at because if you if you if you spend so so amount of money on a headlamp and it's like 200 lumens mm-hmm. i mean those things will definitely be built in to let you adjust the brightness. So there's really no risk in getting something that's bright. And if something's not bright enough, you're gonna it's gonna be annoying. What is yeah. the battery source on you guys' headlamp? It's just uh triple A's. Triple A's? Yeah. How many? I think so, yeah. Two. Oh, I thought those uh, three, were three. rechargeable. Is it three? Yeah. Well, in any case, I think uh one thing is check your batteries before yeah. you go. Check mm, always yeah, bring yeah. always check your batteries before you go, or at least always keep fresh extra pair of, tri- yeah. of batteries in your camping bag because i would say just replace yeah. them before you go oh, i feel like that's kind of a waste it is a waste it, yeah. but like but yeah it, no, just definitely... check it the night before just check if it's yeah. bright enough and then go with well it. i know that's what i mean oh yeah 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 well that's that i definitely agree with that but um yeah there's been at least a couple trips where i brought my headlamp I yeah like, oh, that's I happened to change the batteries too, yeah. um oh and another thing is make sure the hinge won't break because or or at least if it does that you can fix it easily because I had one that was loose for a while, and that's super annoying to yeah. deal with. Yeah. yeah, and also make sure it's comfortable when you wear it on your head because mm-hmm. they come with adjustable straps, but sometimes there might be something that like digs into your forehead yeah. or something. I actually will say that's not something you should skimp out on either. Just cause, like, and they don't cost a lot to begin with. Like ours are what thirty bucks, but we yeah. got some a pack of like three from Costco. Yeah, and they were fine, but like the battery covers would pop off, and yeah, the battery covers really popped off, and like the connections weren't reliable. Mm-hmm. It's just better to get something that's durable. Sometimes you want something that lasts. Camping, it needs to be yeah. durable. Sometimes I feel like it's luck of the draw what's going to last. Because mm. like my headlamp, I don't even know if they make... I mean, <laughs> I looked on Amazon and they make some other type of headlamp, yeah. but they don't make the one I have anymore. That one is 10 years old. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. like my tents. I got it at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it's still super solid, so I don't know. Sometimes it's luck of the draw. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky. Yeah. Um like that daft punk song <laughs> <laughs> what about uh well you guys don't have much of an opinion on hiking poles um just but make I, sure they don't break <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i mean i've used i've gone through a couple pairs of hiking poles um so when we went to yosemite, yosemite yeah. i just bought a pair of those 20 dollars ones from walmart because Mm-mm. i didn't cause, yeah <laughs> well you go well because you go to rei and you see the cheapest pair are 60 bucks and you're like yeah. 60 bucks for a pair of poles mm. no thanks i'll just go buy 20 dollars poles from walmart and no <laughs> don't <laughs> um, they were bent it, well okay to be fair the poles did save me a couple times and they were bent because of that I, I fell like you, the, the trail in Yosemite going up was terrible because they were literally like rocks with like cracks that big between them. Yeah. So my hiking pole would get stuck. And then if I lost my balance, I had nothing else to do but fall on my pole and it got bent. Mm. Um, but not only that, the poles, the cheap poles, and I, I've, I've used them before. They'll eventually like the where they kind of like extend and stuff. They get really loose and stuff. Um, if I were to get hi- well, I do have a pair of hiking poles now. Um, and they're they carbon fiber. Solid. Yeah, they're carbon fiber, and they're also um, not the kinds that you screw to like tighten. They're just you just clamp them. Oh right. And there's actually two kinds of hiking oh, poles. Yeah. The ones that clamp are solid, like they just push down and they're they're solid. And then the ones that you screw are actually like shock absorbent. So oh, when you push mm-hmm. down, they're kind of springy. What um, do you like? Huh? Which do you prefer? I actually I used to prefer the springy ones, but I think I was just used to that. I think the stiff ones are better because they just give you guaranteed support when you're mm, like yeah. going up or downhill yeah yeah it, someone actually recently messaged us on message on facebook asking about hiking poles oh yeah. Like, yeah so i mean let's talk about price real quick i think like sticker shock is like one of those things like everybody has like their different uh mm-hmm. thresholds yeah, of yeah. what they think is too expensive and yeah. not expensive i would say uh 
it just goes back to buy what you can. Like don't don't get something super expensive just because you feel like yeah. you don't want to get something yeah, crappy. Yeah. It's okay to have something crappy. You can use it and mm-hmm. they will be workable. Like mm-hmm. the crappy hiking poles you got from Walmart. Yeah. They worked when they worked. Yeah. And like if you hadn't fell on them, they wouldn't have bent. So Yeah. Although it, it's like you said, it, it can be hit or miss because mm-hmm. for Yosemite, we also bought a couple extra Nalgene's. Oh yeah. Really cheap Nalgene's from, from Walmart. They were Ozark brand. And I was like, what, how could you possibly get a Nalgene wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, but these Nalgene's leaked. And when they were in our luggage, they cracked. Wow. And I was like, bad. I am returning these things. Like, how can, Yeah. Uh, what are these made of? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, that's, that's something is like, on one hand, yeah, like, there's always going to be a way to get, like, a cheaper thing or to, like, make your own thing or whatever. There, there's a reason but, they're referred to by their name brand Nalgene yeah. and not water <laughs> container, you know? So like if you're, if you're going to buy something, just remember that like if it is expensive, then you're still buying something that'll last you longer. Yeah. Yeah. If you get something yeah, really, cheap, yeah. then sometimes it breaks and you have to get another thing anyway. Yeah. That's something um, that's really fun too, to have a gear that a piece of gear that you've had forever. Oh yeah. Cause you think like, about where this it's thing taking is solid. Me. I'm going to have this for the rest of my life. This is awesome. Yeah. That's why I was kind of like hesitant to get a new backpack. I was like, man, this is my old faithful backpack. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's just got some holes in it, but it was like, ah, it's time to retire it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, t- I know what you mean. Cause that's actually one of the things, the feelings I like about camping Yeah. is when you're hiking and you know you've got all that stuff on your back. And yeah. Like, this stuff is gonna get me through the night. Yeah. It's reliable, yeah. and I've spent my time and money figuring out what yeah. I need. You know. Like these pants for two hundred dollars, and yeah. that's a lot for a pair of pants. <laughs> but it's also like these are the only pants I have. Yeah, I've had like, pants that get torn so easily, and yeah, you have yeah. to get another pair. But... Like these are just like old faithful. Mm-hmm. Um, first aid kit. All I want to talk about that. I don't want to do. A deep comprehensive thing there's plenty of videos online yeah Yeah. but what i do want to say is what do you think we use most often from our first aid kit obviously we have stuff in there for emergencies that we hardly ever use but hand sanitizer yeah so some stuff that you would include not necessarily essential but often used hand sanitizer hand sanitizer definitely because i i mean when you're out there that's the last time you ever want to get like a a bug in your stomach like yeah you, you'll be miserable because I've done it before and it, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that high, Hawking Hills trip. You were just like a dead person. You're like, I really want to go. So you went anyway and just like every five seconds you were just resting on a, a rock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah. Um, so hand sanitizer. Band-Aids, I mean, obviously. I mean, bandages yeah. and dis and like. You used the band aid one time to fix that head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, use it as a piece of tape to a little the battery compartment. cream is always important, too. Oh, um, sunscreen. sunscreen. Sunscreen, yeah. Definitely important. Uh, something we probably don't use enough, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with the sun. Like, I recently read. Every single time, yeah. the sun will just. It'll get, it, it'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get back onto the first aid thing, but just a quick tangent. I recently read that sunburn is not your skin cells dying because of this like because of the sun uv's killed it what it is is your skin cells are killing themselves because they got damaged by the sun and they what? want to prevent cancer so your wow. skin cells kill themselves and wow i didn't know that yeah, that's kind of cool i was like that's kind of like freaky like that when you get sunburn that is like every time a chance you could get like cancer developing because your wow. skin cells, your skin i didn't cells know that literally trying to prevent that yeah yeah so. i got super burned at yellowstone i wasn't yeah. paying attention and then like your skins were just like Hari Kari. <laughs> <laughs> like, you better understand I'm doing this for you, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> but um, back onto the first aid kits. One thing I wanted to add was um, Tylenol or aspirin or ibuprofen. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you get a headache out there, it's good to have that, it's in good to have that stuff. If you need a painkiller because, like, your feet hurt or something, it's good to have that. Hmm. Um, I will say meant really quick, I, I did put some gauze and medical tape in there just in case something really bad happened. Oh, yeah. I feel like it's always good to have something like a that. A needle. Yeah, yeah and a needle, thread. splinters, and... Yeah. God forbid anything else. Actually, that you can also use that just to fix equipment. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's about it. I yeah, I think I so. can't think of anything else I want to big talk lighter. about. Big lighter. You can <laughs> oh, skimp on a big lighter. <laughs> one last thing we can talk about is our dry sacks. Why do we bring <laughs> dry sacks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, well, you can actually, they're yeah. I mean, I we just use it for food storage, and we just put all of our food into the dry sacks and then hang that. Yeah. Whenever we're in bear country. Yeah. <clears throat> it's probably not the most perfect solution yeah um but also we tend to bring 
cans and canned foods and things that leave leaky trash mess. Yeah. So we want to keep it in something that isn't cloth and like absorbs right. all of that. So one thing we actually forgot to mention in the video <clears> is <throat> we, there are, there's these lighter waterproof bags which are good for like resisting rain and stuff and technically are submergible. But if you're going canoeing, get something like this. I mean, you don't, it doesn't doesn't have to be this big, but like. So for those of you listening, he's holding yeah, it's a, a very heavy line. duty looking. Yeah, it's a it's a de- it's designed. It's a Black be, Canyon dry bag, but I mean whatever brand, it's really thick, kind of like rubbery to the yeah. touch. So it like won't tear or yeah. anything. Because a lot of the ones that we have are like nylon, but this yeah. is like guaranteed. You can submerge it. Yeah. yeah, and I mean mostly that's for our camera stuff. But like yeah. if you're going canoeing, then yeah, there's certain things you're gonna want. Well, it's funny because I I just remember this, but I initially got my dry sack as a trash bag, basically just putting oh, all yeah, the yeah. wet food stuff into that. So that it could be in my backpack, but it wouldn't get everything wet yeah. and disgusting. Actually, mine has a hole in it, so it kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, next time, by the way, next time we bring trash bags, because sometimes we bring like the little trash liners for trash, mm. we're going to bring one that's actually got a nice thick, like, because <laughs> we could bring those like really cheap plastic ones, you know, they always rip. Like we're going to yeah. bring like yeah, yeah. a black one that's like a <clears throat> super heavy duty. Kind, well, that's you know? what I'm saying is like some... I guess for for us, our trash tends to be like cans and stuff. Yeah, so it's always cutting. Yeah. Out of the plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like for people who bring like you know packaged camping stuff, yeah, it might just be plastic and paper and stuff. Yeah, um, but yeah, I agree. We should bring. But that's like there. that also brings up a point. It's just like you. That's one of the things that bugs me. Mm. You know, like mm. that's my personal preference. Like <laughs> uh, when I have trash, I want it to be very contained. Well, that's yeah. another thing. Is like if you want. Like you always complain about us bringing, yeah, yeah. Trash bag. I just never bring it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a team. It's like, yeah. But yeah, that that's actually that's something I wanted to bring up too. Is that when you travel as a group, mm. lot it's it makes sense to not everybody bring the same. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Especially if you don't need to. But you have to communicate. Like, you have to communicate. <laughs> and make sure that you know that somebody else is bringing it, and if they're not bringing it, and you care, yeah, then you bring that. Instead. Like at this point, you you assume that we bring a water filter, right? Yeah. yeah. Or um, like, I assume you have the toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> I, I usually ask you before we leave, but like. I always bring it though. Yeah. I will always bring it because I, I, I can't use moss or sticks or yeah. rocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you usually assume that Andrew's got his tarp. Right. Yeah. yeah. Here's here's a question for you all. Um, what is one piece of gear that you would like to get in the fu- like in the near future? Because mm. I one that I actually have, I can say it now actually. Yeah. I want to get some cotton sacks so that I can put like trail mix and stuff in there because I'm tired of using plastic bags. I want to have something I can reuse. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to waste stuff. <laughs> yeah, the Ziploc bags, like technically you can reuse them if you rewash them. But yeah, but like, they just they, they wear can down. Rip. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Like our battery bags, you need something like that. For yeah, 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 yeah. Nice cotton I love those sack. things, man. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a good question. Well, after this discussion, I feel like I want to get a good shelter, mm. like a really lightweight small shelter just for one person so that when it rains i can just be like i'm covered yeah, and it yeah. won't be such a question every night yeah with the, i mean that makes for a good watching too so maybe i won't <laughs> <laughs> uh i think what i want to get right now actually what i've been oh, thinking about getting is a a nice flint striker kind of like that mm-hmm. one you got from that guy um <clears throat> something that andrew won't take and then lose <clears throat> <clears throat> um you lost it no, we lost it when we were doing a side video, I think. We lost <laughs> one of one? the... No, no, no. no, no. Oh. The, first, the, fir- the first two that we've ever bought were these red ones that were like that long. And we each had one. And he took mine for some reason to do a side video and never returned it. And I oh. don't know whatever happened to it. <laughs> I like that really. What, what's the big one he just got from Clifty Wilderness? Uh, someone someone sent, sent it that, to him. Right? Yeah, I don't remember who. What's Andrew, the brand? The details. I know, but what's uh, the brand I, though? Well, I think they're... Like um or homemade. They're like like homemade, man made, like mm. uh man made. <laughs> <laughs> like not machine made, basically. Like oh, not okay, okay, not gotcha. factory made or whatever. Yeah. Um but yeah, it was nice. It had it was really long and it had the striker was like filed down right yeah right angles so that it yeah. struck it really well. Yeah, that was awesome. Um well I remember the other thing I <clears throat> wanted to get, but I've already mentioned it, is I'm gonna get a gas stove. Oh yeah. A little yeah. propane tank with a little top part. Yeah. Thing. Especially, especially for you, since you always want coffee in the morning. Yeah, like yeah. it seems like natural that you should own one because yeah, 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 yeah. You you don't want to have to rely on other people yeah. for your coffee. <laughs> I might I might get a knife with a good spine on it. <laughs> yeah. No, no more yeah. cold coffee for you. The crunchy yeah, cold. The coffee. crunchy coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, oh, um, there's one thing I wanted to touch on. Um, okay, first of all, the trowel. I don't know if, how many people who watch it know what the trowel oh, is yeah, for. Yeah. I'm sure people, anybody who has experience camping should know what it's for. Yeah. But technically, when you number two in, the, in nature, mm-hmm. you need to dig a hole. Um, and you might, some people might think like, well, why? Well, a couple reasons. One, <laughs> so people don't just openly would they step w- on it because that would be terrible. <laughs> Which that happened to me somehow. The Cliffsy Wilderness. Yeah. 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 And then gross. <laughs> two, and we saw something like in the middle of the trail, like right next yeah. to the Yeah. That, was a, that had to have been a dog. I don't, yeah, I don't know what that <laughs> was, but that was anyways, a person. <laughs> number two, it's for the safety of the wilderness or the environment because if you just poop on the ground and it rains, it's going to be just, yeah, it's yeah. going to flow into like a body of water eventually but when you you know bury it it's gonna stay there and it's gonna like (laughs) yeah it's better basically (laughs) the trowel makes it so much easier like you think you can just use a stick which i have done that actually i will say if you do want to go that route get a nice rock and the key is to jab it into the ground to break up the roots and then scoop the loose soil out yeah (laughs) so you're like plowing the ground kind of yeah actually that's what i do with a trowel anyway but (laughs) but they make um like so, we just have a cheap plastic Coglins one, and it, it works fine. I mean, that's like what every camping store yeah. sells. Well, they yeah. also have like I've seen like a Kickstarter for some sort of foldable lightweight titanium one or something. But I don't really see. But any you used to get more advanced than a plastic. <laughs> you <so>. used to, <laughs> what was used to have a bulk food section scoop or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that's where you it got was. it. I don't know either. Yeah. Oh man, it's like you didn't even have a handle, so you just had to go like. <laughs> You're like you get done with your visit. You guys want some trail mix? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's. Here's another thing I want to touch on now that you mentioned scoops and trail mix is cutlery or silverware, basically. Oh, yeah. 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 Someone always forgets that on the trip. Someone inevitably always forgets. And I always tend to bring a metal one, but I don't really like to do that. But, you know, it's just easy. You grab one. I don't know what happened to my small wooden spoon. But also the plastic ones you buy, like they break. They break. No, plastic never get plastic. I don't know why anyone, either metal or wood. That's my rule for everything. It's like. If you're an ultra lighter, get wood. Yeah, don't, wood is great. Don't use Carve plastic, your own. but learn to use chopsticks. Actually, it chopsticks is, are good too. Yeah, man. chopsticks it's are great. It's great to have utensils in the wild. That is true. Yeah, like yeah. when you like, I don't remember what I did last time, but I usually bring, or not usually, I have been recently bringing an actual fork, actual spoon, mm-hmm. and a pair of chopsticks. Mm-hmm. And having all three of those, man, it's like yeah. Here's you get like a little container and just put them yeah. in there. <laughs> no, I see like. I feel like a lot of utensil stuff is a sham. Like the plastic stuff breaks and it's just like it melts. Why would you want to yeah, use it? You don't, you oh, yeah. Um, no, like every plastic you don't want that. Yeah. material camping silverware thing I've I just, seen yeah. snaps. And like, remember Thomas? I broke Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thomas And the Two other seconds. thing I was going to mention, which is also Thomas related, is remember he had that, like, um, I don't know where he got it, but it was like the folding cutlery thing. It was for his, didn't he have it for like a Civil War reenactment? His yeah. mess Oh, kit. was it? Yeah. Maybe. But I that's know. totally unnecessary. His don't need big it. chopsticks were great. Where those they, were, yeah. Were those his? Yeah. Oh, had, like, we were talking about, like, like, this long. Uh, we were talking about um, chopsticks. They sell, like, um, metal chopsticks. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. Like, like some Korean cook, like places. some Chinese cooks yeah. use metal chopsticks. I was like, oh, that'd be great for like when you're cooking. And you well, just, our yeah, parents have these stuff. wooden um, bamboo or bamboo chopsticks, ones that you can reuse, not disposable. And like, I feel like those are just perfect. Too. Well, I mean, if you're if you're like cooking in an open flame, though, you don't want to stick bamboo <laughs> chopsticks in there. Well, even then, uh, yeah, you, you'd probably be fine. But my dad had these huge ones that were like <laughs> a foot and a half long, <laughs> and he would use those. That'd be probably good for the fire. Probably need like a rubber band to give you extra like strength. <laughs> yeah. <you're> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing with chopsticks is like you can carve your own. It's great. Oh, that's, that's true. true. I mean, you just got to find done that two before, straight right? twigs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I generally don't like making my own stuff. It's just usually more of a hassle than yeah. I well, in sight like at least. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna make your own stuff, a chop chopsticks are the easiest thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> if you know how to use them yeah. reasonably well. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I wanted to touch on actually was um, sleeping mats. Oh, yeah, I've used a those. foam sleeping mat and mm. an inflatable one. Andrew, you've used an inflatable one. I don't know if you've ever used our inflatable ones. I have. Okay, and then but you in, have in like here. <laughs> okay, and then you have like the thinner type one. Yeah, I have the same one Thomas has. Do you have any opinions on the different ones? Well, I have an opinion on the one I'm using right now. It mm. sucks. Oh, right? really? Yeah, I thought you the, liked it. It's fine, but the valve leaks. Mm. So, like in the morning, even if I fill it up really good and I tighten it really tight it leaks and then by the morning it's like kind of 
Now, do you know it's the valve? Can you hear it leaking from the valve? No, I don't oh. know. Because, see, that happened to me, but I don't know if it's the valve it's or if not, I got a hole. It's not like I'm... It's flat in the morning. It's just slightly deflated. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so... It, but anyways, Mike was telling me that those do that. Mm-hmm. The ones that... Yeah, anyway, go ahead. Okay, well, my thoughts on the air mattresses or any sort of sleeping pad is... So, specifically the air mat, the kind that me and Andrew have, it kind of inflates to about a couple, mm-hmm. maybe two, two and a half inches. It's really comfortable to sleep on um, for the most part. Like, especially if you're the kind of person who kind of, like, sleeps on their side or whatever. But being an air mat, it distributes weight really weird, or it distributes support really weird. Uh-huh. So, well, I've actually found that with an air mattress, I'll be, my back will be uncomfortable because... So my hmm. butt will weigh down the middle of the mat. Yeah. And then everything else will poof up. So I'm like sitting there like lying on the, like this. Oh. And then like my back gets uncomfortable lying on my back. So which is why I'm always on my side. And one way I remedy is it is by sticking my backpack under my feet so I can kind of like elevate my feet. Oh. Mm. But that's one thing I don't like about the inflatable ones. I've never Have had that problem, the... I don't think. But it's been a while. What? I said I've never had that problem, but it's also well, been I, a while I think since I've used it. It might be a preference for me too because I, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't like sleeping on my back. On my back. The foam one, yeah. though. Yeah, have you used the foam one? <clears throat> That's the one I used to use. Um, and it's great in terms of it's super lightweight, super easy to pack up. Yeah, and you just, and it's ready. Yeah, and you don't really have to worry, like, too much. Like, you don't have to worry about holes in it. Mm-hmm. It keeps you insulated from the ground, but it, basically the only problem is that, well, two problems is that it doesn't pack up really small. Yeah. Like a, you can with an air mat. But it's that's, light, but not It's small. kind of like a benefit and a curse because... Packing up an air mat into the little thing is really annoying. Yeah, you gotta get all the air out. This one's like fold up, done. Um, but another thing is, it's just not as stick as mm. like an air mat. So I feel like for me, I'd prefer an air mat. But then it is such a th- like you just have to make sure it doesn't get damaged. One, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of like yours <clears throat> in the sense that it's really more for insulation purposes. Mm, you could yeah. bring those trash bags and put leaves in them. <laughs> yeah. Just sleep on that. Trash. Mm. Yes, I could. <laughs> I feel like yeah. there's lots of I've done that actually. Do. I, I filled uh, <laughs> I filled some with hay and it was actually really comfy. But oh. hmm. when did you do that? Is that that survival class thing? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was when I was, I was like, forced to do it. When did you see hay? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, let me see how long we've been recording here. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I think we can go <laughs> what ahead time and is it? end it. <laughs> Oh, uh, nine. Okay, that's about an hour. Yeah, that's and twenty. I at think least. we've talked for a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any um, closing thoughts? Um, well, let us know what your gear preferences are. Actually, I'm actually really curious. Um, you know, if we said something that sounds completely outlandish to you, let oh, us know yeah, what you think. Yeah, yeah. I'm super, super curious. About yeah, it. yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm just really curious what each person's style is, mm-hmm. and then beyond that, watch our videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you have any further questions about our gear or anything, you can mm, yeah, yeah. Me- send us a message or whatever. We'll try our best to answer it. Um, I will say, though, we'll do our best to give you our opinions on gear. But if, you're really, if you really want to know more about what gear you need for, go- to, for camping and stuff, I would recommend going to like a camping gear store and asking them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because we can spout stuff off, but in the end, it's just personal experience that we yeah, have. It's, yeah, it's almost all personal experience for us because yeah. I never read reviews or anything yeah. like that. And that's what we say in our gear videos. Like, these aren't necessarily recommendations. Yeah. It's just what has <laughs> sort of worked well, for us. Well, that's why we haven't done gear reviews is because yeah. I feel like regardless of what we say, yeah, we're not really qualified enough to yeah. say that, oh, this is great. Especially if, you're, if you haven't used it at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Well, I guess we didn't talk about cameras at all. We'll talk about that some other time. Yeah, yeah. But if you want camera recommendations, I can give you, and I will say definitively, mm-hmm. what camera you should get. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk at length about that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Any more closing comments? Mm-hmm. Nope. I'm good. Just have fun. Stay safe. So check us out on youtube.com slash adventure archives. Yeah. And uh, right be sure to subscribe and check out our full episodes. Yeah, and what else is there? There's a uh, Instagram, right? There's Patreon.com oh, yeah. slash adventure. You can see all of our videos early yep. by paying yeah, two dollars. Yeah. You also get bonuses like postcards. Sometimes we send patches Other out. Other stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, Deleted the postcards scenes. are actually really cool. Andrew just finished yeah. a couple postcards. Yeah, I'm looking, catching up. <laughs> yeah, looking, yeah, they look some, good. for <laughs> some of the tiers, you get uh, soundtrack for the episode. Yeah, free you get listed so. in the credits. Things, but like that. most importantly, it just helps us make more episodes. Yeah, it yeah. really helps. Yeah. It really helps. Yeah. 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 I mean, even if you just 
comment and like this video. Anybody who's still listening, they have already heard this. <laughs> 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 okay, so thank thanks you so for much. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, signing out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to do this. You got to be like. <laughs> <laughs>